Welcome to Mary Bozak Yoga. I call this class Sweat and Smile because there is a whole lot of movement and a great meditation at the end to keep you smiling from the inside out. That said, please move carefully, only take the postures that feel right in your body and modify at any time. And finally, please make a donation if you can to keep these classes going. They really make a difference and are so appreciated. Um, I just kind of have like a full body thing for you today. I'm just going to move a lot, um, but not like at a frantic pace or anything. Just going to move a lot and actually include a little meditation in there for you as well. A short little meditation at the end. So it's an ancient Taoist meditation, an abbreviated version of it that just is something that helps keep me calm and something that I think would be a good tool to have um, for, I don't know, just to share with you. So. If we're ready, uh, which I think it looks like everyone is, we're going to start standing today. So just come to the top of your space, stand up, and I got you all in right here. Good. And once more, thank you for being here on this spring Saturday. Happy April. There we go. So just standing at the top of your mat, let your feet be hip socket distance apart. Span through your toes, kind of wiggle your feet, rock a little bit forward and back, side to side. Really root your feet into the floor. Feel the soles of your feet connect down right into the earth. Reach your fingertips down, pulling your, your shoulders down your back, lifting your sternum. Take a really big breath in. Open mouth exhale to start. Standing here in mountain pose, start to just sense what brought you to your mat today. What are you wanting out from your practice? What does your body need? And allow yourself to move in that direction as we move and breathe and meditate together today. Go ahead and bring your palms together right in front of the heart. Again, getting on the same breath, let go of all the air. And inhale deeply here, fill up. Open mouth release. And flutter your eyes open, pull your arms down, around, and up. Take a breath in. Exhale and float the arms down. Come into ragdoll position. So ragdoll with the knees bent or straight. Hold on to opposite elbows and just sway. Let your head hang really, really heavy here. Look up, reach your fingertips for the floor. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, rise all the way up, reach your arms up. And exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale again here, reaching up. Exhale, back all the way down. Inhale, half lift here. As you exhale, bring your fingertips to the floor, bend your knees deeply. And then step your left foot back, lower down to your left knee. Crawl your hands up onto your right thigh and push your thigh away from the ear. Start to push into the floor just a little bit, about 50% of your effort into your right foot. And then sweep your left arm up and over. So you're reaching over to the right, soften your right shoulder down. Good. And then inhale, reach directly up. As you exhale, reach your fingertips forward and then down as you straighten your right leg, half time lunge. And crawl your fingertips forward. Step your left foot up to meet your right. Inhale to lift halfway. Exhale, fingertips down, knees bent. Right foot steps back, low lunge here. Crawling your hands up onto your left thigh. Press your left thigh away from you. Get some space between the hip 
and the rib cage. Push into your left foot, grow a little bit taller, and then sweep your right arm up and over. Good. Soften the left shoulder down away from your ear. Good. Inhale, reach the right fingertips directly up, and then reach forward and down as you hinge at your hips, flex your left toes. Say hello and good morning to your hands here. Crawl your hands forward here. Step your right foot up to meet your left. Inhale to lift halfway. As you exhale, fingertips down. Wiggle your feet a little further apart. Bending your knees. Reach your right arm on the inside of your right leg. Right knee stays bent as you spiral your left arm up. Press your right arm into your right leg. Good. Find a little bit more length in the spine. Yeah, you got it. Good. Look down and switch sides. Left fingertips down. Left arm kind of pushes into the inner left leg. Left knee is bent. Right arm and right leg are straight. Try to elongate through the spine. Good. Look down. Touch the floor here. Wiggle your feet a little bit closer together so they're about hip socket distance. Bending your knees. Come into a chair pose just to transition. Breath in. Breath out, sweep your arms behind you, interlace your fingers, puff your heart, and then fold forward and down. One more chance to help your neck get a little bit of length and space here. This gravity helps just traction. Bend your knees, come through chair pose. Inhale, reach your arms up and then stand all the way up. Hold on to opposite elbows and lean over to the right. Get a nice side stretch. Turn your gaze up just a little if you can. And inhale all the way up. Exhale and switch the cross of your forearms. Lean over to the left. Inhale and coming up, reach your arms up, touch the palms together, look up if it's okay on your neck, and then exhale, fold forward, hinge at the hips, come all the way down. Inhale, half lift here, strong spine. Exhale, hands down, feet step back, plank pose. We're going to hold our plank nice and steady for three, for two, for one. Drop to your knees, toes together, knees apart, child's pose. So sit your hips back, let your head come down. You can wiggle your hips side to side a little bit. If you want to just feel into the stretch a little bit more. Good. Look up and walk your hands over to the right side, stacking left hand on top of right for more sensation. Coming back through the center, slowly, and to the left. Right hand on top of left for more sensation. Good. Coming back to the center here, full breath in, open mouth release. And then ripple up to table position. Fix your knees underneath your hips. And walk your hands forward like you're going to do puppy pose, but not quite as far. And drop your chest, drop to your elbow tips, and let your forehead come down. So this is kind of like praying child's pose. It's more like a, a praying puppy pose, but not quite as intense as puppy. Foreheads down. You can walk your elbow tips forward if you want to feel a little bit more. You can also pray with pressing the fingertips into one another, kind of tenting the hands a little bit. Good. Really breathe into the upper back here. Drop the hands down, walk 
them in, back to table pose. Sweep your right arm up, take a breath in. And on the breath out, thread your right arm underneath your left, slide your left arm forward, setting up for just three breaths in this thread the needle variation. Again, opening the shoulders. Starting to activate the core muscles a little bit too for stability. Good, slide your left hand back towards your face, press into the core, release the right arm up, and just circle it out, forward or back. Yogi's choice. Right hand down, sweep the left arm up, breath in, and breath out, thread underneath your right arm. Slide the right hand forward as you press your left arm down into the floor. A little engagement in your thighs and the low belly just to stabilize. Slide your right hand back towards your face, press into the floor, release your right arm, and just roll it out forward or back. Good. Walk your hands forward about a handprint, curl your toes under, press your hips back, and then lift up downward facing dog. Start to take whatever natural movements help you feel into what you need today in this first dog. Pedaling the legs, shaking the head. Every day that we practice, it's kind of a new day in our body. We might have some things that are the same, but lots of things can pop up, especially little subtleties. We take our time to listen and respond. We can often prevent some major discomfort later. So Getting curious here, what areas need a little bit more attention, a little bit more compassion. Good. Inhale, rock forward to plank pose. As you exhale, lower to your belly here. Prop yourself up onto your forearms. Sphinx pose. Press the forearms down, press the hands down, pull back. Pelvis down, the belly lifts. Good. Broaden through your collarbones. Feel the inner edges of your shoulder blades, the closest part towards your spine. Slide down your back. Yeah. Good. And release your elbows. Bring them back. Hands by low ribs. Squeeze the elbows in. Little cobra. Baby cobra here. Don't go very high. Hover your hands off the floor. Good. Back strengthening. Press your hands into the floor. Press through to table and then back to downward facing dog again. On your next inhale, rise up to the tiptoes. Exhale, bend your knees, come to the top of your space. Inhale to lift halfway, strong spine. Feel like you're doing that little baby cobra when you half lift. Good. Exhale, bring your head down. Inhale, sweep the arms up as you come to stand. And exhale, right in front of the heart. Sun salute A. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, dog forward. Inhale, half lift, strong spine. Exhale, hands down, feet back, plank position. Take one breath in, lower on the exhale. Elbows squeeze in, shoulders go lower than elbows. Inhale, lift your heart. You can take cobra, up dog, or even some form of locust if you like there. And then on your exhale, push to downward facing dog. Really root down through your hands. Try to squeeze gently the space between the thumb and the first finger. Simultaneously spiraling your triceps back. This is really going to charge up your arms. Good. Inhale, rise to your tiptoes, look forward. Exhale, bend your knees, travel to the top of your mat. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold, bring your head down. Inhale, rise up all the way. And exhale, hands right at the heart. Again, inhale, reaching up. Exhale, dive forward. Inhale, half lift, strong spine. Exhale, hands down, feet 
step or even jump back if that's in your practice. And then exhale, lower down through your vinyasa. We'll meet up in downward facing dog. Reignite your hands, your arms, and this time push into your feet. If your heels don't touch down, no worries. Just push into the balls of the feet. Lift the hips higher. If you feel like your shins are pulling apart from one another, this will help to charge up the legs. Good. Inhale, rise up to the tiptoes. Exhale, make your way to the top of your space. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold, bring the head down. Inhale, rise up all the way. And exhale, hands right at the heart. Good. Inhale for chair pose here. Sweep your fingertips down to the floor. Sit really low. Then reach your arms up. We're going to hold here for three, for two. Good. And one. Exhale, keep the knees bent, touch the floor. Step your left foot back and wiggle your right foot to the right a little. Warrior one. Sweep your arms up. Straighten your front leg just a little and hook your right thumb on your right hip crease. Pull your right hip crease back and then come back into the lunge. Now re-extend your right arm. Mm -hmm. And then bend your right elbow. So you're giving yourself a little pat on the back with your right hand. Use your left hand to guide your right elbow back a little bit more for this tricep stretch. Try not to flare the low ribs out though. So pulling the low ribs in a little bit, kind of a dual action. Good, stick with it. One more breath. Good, release the arms straight up. Breath in, breath out. Touch the floor here. Step back, plank position. You can take vinyasa or just push right back to downward facing. Inhale, rise up to the tiptoes, look forward. Exhale, bend your knees, walk or hop to the top. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fingertips touch down again. Bend your knees deeply, chair pose, sweep your arms up. Sit low, reach high for three. Good, two, one. Touch the floor, keep the knees bent. Step your right foot back. Wiggle your left foot to the left a little bit. This gives your hips space. Rise up, warrior one. Good. And then back off of the front leg a little bit. Straighten it just a little. Hook your left thumb on your left hip crease. Pull it back. Your right fingertips subtly shift towards the left. And then re-bend your left knee. Keep reaching up. Re-extend your left arm. Give yourself a pat on the back with your left hand. And then guide your left elbow tip a little further back using your right hand. Pull your low ribs together. Lift your sternum. Try to relax any muscles in your face. Good. On your breath in, release the arms. Look up. Breath out. Touch the floor here. Step your left foot back. And you can move through vinyasa or you can just go right to downward facing dog. Good. On an exhale, walk your hands back towards your feet. Feet hip socket distance apart. Inhale to lift halfway here. Good. As you exhale, hands come back down. Bend your knees a little and slide one palm underneath the foot and then your other palm. So you're stepping on your palms. Bend your knees as much as you like. Wiggle your toes into your wrist crease here. It's a wrist massage. If it's possible to straighten your legs, you're going to flex your quadriceps and lean more weight into the balls of the feet. And stay here another moment or two. Try to pull your hands out from your feet, even though you're not going to let them come out. Let your head drop towards the floor, muscles around the neck soften. Good. Bend your knees deeply again, release one hand and then the other. Inhale, little baby chair pose at the back of the mat here. And exhale, fold forward. 
Inhale, look forward. Walk your hands out to a plank position. And then drop to your knees. Extending your right leg straight, you're going to spiral your right heel down. Swing your left leg to the side a little bit and come into this lovely side stretch, reaching right arm up over the ear. So Yogi's choice to stay here today or maybe work regular side plank, stepping your feet together, Vashisthasana, reaching right arm up to the ceiling. Or you can work any other variation, decorating that Vashisthasana with whatever you'd like in your top leg. Just gonna come and check on you guys, good. Look down, touch the floor wherever you're at, make your transition graceful, whatever it is you're doing. Come back through plank, good. Drop the knees to the floor, give the wrists a little relief. Just sit back for a moment, make this roll out. And then right back to table, extend the left leg back and straight. Spiral the left heel down, swing the right shin to the side a little bit and reach up and over. Good, so you can stay here. Side stretch version of Vashisthasana or start to stack up, extending the right leg back, maybe stacking the feet or staggering the feet. If you're stacked, try to reach the left fingertips up towards the ceiling. Lift the left hip up and push it forward. Good, again, any variation of that top leg, this looks good, you guys. Awesome, look down, touch the floor, back through regular plank. You can take vinyasa if you want, or just sit the knees back, the hips back. Once you're done, give yourself just a moment of rest in your wrists. So if you took that vinyasa, go ahead and roll out for a moment. And then let's all meet back up in downward facing dog here. Good, downward facing dog. Walk your feet and hands closer to one another. So you're kind of in the middle of the mat. And then turn your toes out and your heels in. Start to walk your fingertips forward and sit your hips down. Yogi squat, malasana here. So. Lifting your sternum up, pulling your tailbone down. Let's work the back muscles and open the shoulders a little bit. Sweep your right arm down, lift your left arm up and press your head and neck back. Broaden through the collarbones. Good. Come through the center, take a breath in. And breath out, switch sides. Left arm sweeps down on the inside of the knee. Reach the right arm up, broaden through the collarbones. Good, exhale, come back to the center, looks nice. And then from here, you can either hold Malasana or come into a quick crow pose if you want. Or if you just wanna take a rag doll, you can do that. So yogi's choice what you wanna do. If you want to come into practicing crow, you can just shift your weight a little bit too. Whatever serves you best here. And when we're done, we'll meet up in a rag doll pose. Good, Brenda. Nice, Catherine. Awesome, Sarah. This is looking good, you guys. Good. Meet up in a ragdoll pose when you're done. Give your arms a little rest. Give your whole body a little bit of a rest. Nice. Good. Walk your hands and feet back out to downward facing dog. Good. On a breath in, raise your right leg. Bend your knees, stack your hip here. Push into your hands strongly. Good, you got it. Inhale, straighten the right leg. Exhale, bring right knee towards right upper arm. Inhale, right leg up and back. Exhale, right knee towards left arm. Shoulders over wrists. Yeah, you got it, Daryl, good. Inhale, right leg up and back. Exhale, look forward, step between your hands, high lunge. So make sure you're set up first and then reach the arms up. Good, open up to warrior two. Make sure you can see your toes past your knee. Beautiful, flip your palms up here. Take a breath in, straighten your front leg, reach your arms up alongside your ears. Exhale, sink into it. Do that again, breath in, lift. Good. Breath out, 
lower. One more time. Good, this time stay in your warrior two. Let your left arm drop down your left leg. Reach your right arm up and really try to push down through the right foot so you can reach up higher and a little bit back with that right arm. Reverse warrior. Good. Coming back up here. Straighten your front leg. Reach forward, forward, forward. In fact, reach so far forward you feel like I'm pulling on that front hand. And then come down to triangle pose. Good. Hand can come to ankle, shin, maybe a block. Broaden through your collarbones here a little. Take a little movement with your top arm. Everybody breathe in. Breathe out, reach your left fingertips towards your right foot. Exhale it down. Breathe in, reach up. So creating this huge circle. Exhale it down. Do that one more time. Good. And then we'll breathe in, reach up and just forward. Look down at your right foot, touch the floor, come to the ball of the back foot. Quick pyramid pose. Step your back foot in just a little. You might need to wiggle your right foot to the right a little. So try to push down through that right foot like you're pressing on a gas pedal. Broaden through the collarbones. Good. And then bend your right knee. Step your left foot back. Come to a low lunge. Sweep your arms up. Full breath in here. Breath out. Hands come to the heart. Twist towards your bent front leg, reach your left elbow tip forward, and then cross over. Make a fist with your left hand, wrap it with your top hand, and push into it. This will give you more space in the collarbone. If you want to keep hands at prayer, you can. So Yogi's choice to stay here or curl the back toes under and lift up, or you can even open the arms for this high lunge twist variation. You can open the arms if you're in low lunge too, by the way. Good. No matter where you're at, good adaptations, everyone. Make sure you squeeze your thighs a little bit together. Nice bend in. Good, Emily. This looks good. Nikki, you make it hard to see. <laughs> good. Go ahead. Release wherever you're at. Bring your back knee down if it was up. Inhale. Unwind here. Reach the arms up. Exhale, hinge at the hips, half Hanuman again. You got it, Sarah, good friend. Good, look forward, walk your hands towards the top of your space, float that left leg up. You can stay here practicing warrior three, or if you have handstand hops in your practice, or if you just want to shift the weight into the hands a little bit, you can. So, yogi's choice to practice handstand hop, or not, or warrior three. Good. All right, let's all come on back down. Wherever you're at, step that left foot back. Hands to the floor. Right foot can swing up and back if you like for three-legged dog. You might even take three-legged vinyasa. We'll meet in downward facing dog. Okay, and just take a moment in this dog to notice the difference between Right and left side. On the in breath, raise your right or left leg, left leg. Bend your knees, stack your hip, push evenly through your palms. Good. Inhale, left leg straight. Exhale, shoulders over wrist, tap your left arm with your left knee. Inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, tap your right arm. Inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, step through. Steady yourself. Come to high lunge, crescent. Reaching up here. Good. Make sure you're steady. And then open out to warrior two. I'm just going to turn around so I can see you guys. <laughs> Good. Flip your palms, take that dynamic movement. Straighten the front leg, breathe in, arms reach alongside your ears. Breath out, back to warrior two. 
Again, inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Make sure your knee is tracking right over the second and third toe. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Let's do just one more here. Okay, coming back to warrior two. Right arm down towards right leg. Reach up and back with your left arm. Reach more up than back. It's reverse warrior, but it's, it doesn't need to go really far back to be reversed. Press into your left foot strongly. You'll find more space in the left side body that way. Good. Inhale back up through warrior two. Straighten your left leg. Reach forward with your left arm. Reach back with your right hip. And then come into your triangle. Good. Reach down, touching shin, ankle, or floor, maybe the block. Right fingertips up towards the ceiling. Good. And we'll move right into those arm circles. Take a breath in, reach higher. Breath out, reach towards the top of the mat. And down. Breath in, reach the arm up. Breath out, circle forward and down. Breath in, up and around. Breath out, forward and down. Last time. This time, as you look down, touch the floor here. Come to the ball of the back foot, step the back foot in about a third of the way. Pyramid pose. You might just stay right here, working on squaring your hips. You could bring hands to blocks here if you like. Some of you might take a behind the arm or behind the back arm variation if you like. It's a symmetrical part of the body with the arms. You can change the arm variation if that works for you. Good. Bend your left knee. Step your right foot back. Low lunge. Setting up for our twist. Reach your arms up. Make the spine long. Breath in. And then breath out. Hands to heart. Twist towards your bent front leg. Reach your right elbow tip forward. Again, lengthen the spine is important. Squeeze the thighs together here. Make a fist with your body hand. Wrap your top hand over it. That will give you more space. You can stay here. Or you can curl the back toes under and lift. And then you can continue to hold this twist with any arm variation that works for you. What I want you to focus on is taking time to make sure your spine is long, your breath is smooth, and you're working in a twisting mode that works for you here. So you never want to twist at the cost of the breath and the integrity of, or the integrity of the length of the spine. Good, one more breath. If the back leg is lifted, slowly lower it. And then slowly unwind wherever you're at. Inhale, reach up, we'll undo this. Good, exhale, hinge at your hips. Flex your left toes, and then crawl your hands forward here. Coming into warrior three, prep, lifting your right leg up, maybe lifting your hands up, or maybe taking those handstand hops again, or just shifting your weight into the hands. All of it is appropriate. It just depends on where you want to take your practice. If you're taking handstand hops, Focus on keeping your hands glued down and don't make handstand the goal. Just playing and exploring. Nice, everyone. Good, Sarah. Good, everyone. Bend your front leg. Step back here. Hands down, framing your left foot. Sweep your left foot up. Take a breath in and then breath out. Make your way to down dog. You can just step back. Take three legged vinyasa, no vinyasa. Whatever you want. And once in down dog, you're going to have five breaths. So you can stay there or you can push into child's pose. Take what helps you and your practice in this moment to find smooth, steady breathing, to listen more carefully to the subtleties that are coming up in your body. Not just the big sensations. Those are easy to listen to. Don't want to ignore them, but listen to the subtle ones too. And we'll take five more breaths. Those kind of needed to be close. Good. If 
here in child's pose, come back to downward facing. And inhale, rise up to your tiptoes here. Exhale, bend your knee. Walk or hop to the top. Inhale to lift halfway. As you exhale, bend your knee. Shift your weight into your left foot. Hug your right knee in. We're going to come all the way up to stand. Lift the right knee in. Good. It's really, really hard for me to turn my head and balance at the same time. So I'm going to turn towards you guys. Good. So right knee in. Open it out to the side. Right foot anywhere above or below the knee. Does not matter. Good. Press the palms together. Feel your right hip dropping a little bit in this tree pose. Left hip squeezes more in. Right hip drops more. Yeah, even it out. Reach your arms up. Maybe even lift your gaze. Challenge balance here if you like. Notice how your foot has to work to help you balance. All those muscles in the foot. You can come out of it. Just come back into it. I come out of these all the time. Our balance is different on different days. Slowly slide your hands back towards your heart. You're going to turn your right knee forward. Shoot your right foot back and just step back, setting up for a wide-legged forward fold. So you're going to face the long edge of your mat. Turn your toes in and your heels out, hands to hips. Take a breath in and then breath out. Come down halfway. Walk your hands to the floor. Breath in, extend the spine and breath out. Let your head come down and allow weight to pour into the balls of the feet, the front part of the feet. Squeeze your hips together. And yogi's choice, walking your hands forward today or back. If you have a headstand practice, tripod headstand, you're welcome to take that. We're only going to be here shortly, though. Whatever's touching the floor, root down into the floor. Unless you're in headstand, you're rooting down into your hands. Very little weight is in your head. Good. If legs are up, slowly bring them back down. Give yourself a moment here. And then everyone, walk your shoulders, or walk your hands right back underneath your shoulders. Pause. Take a long breath in. Long breath out. Breath in. Reach your hands to your hips. Breath out, just hold. Breath in, come all the way up. And then turn towards the top of your mat, step your feet together. Good, inhale, reach up. Exhale, dive forward. Inhale, lift halfway. As you exhale, shift your weight into your right foot, pick up your left foot, and come to stand. So find your balance here first. Already notice what's working for you, and then pull all the energy towards the center of the body. Good. Bring your foot anywhere above or below the right knee. Soften the left hip. It's going to feel like that leg drops, and that's okay. It should. Pin in the right hip, hands towards the heart. Good. Maybe lift the arms up. Maybe lift the gaze if you want to challenge balance. Vision is a large part of our balance. It's not just a physical thing where we hold on and grip and it's what we see, what we look at. That directs us as well. Go ahead and bring your hands back to your heart. Shift your gaze steadily forward, slowly. Turn the left knee forward. Bend the standing leg a little bit as you shoot your left leg back. Step back, come to wide-legged forward fold set up again. So toes in, heels up. This time, reach your arms to the side, interlace your fingers, pull the knuckles down, broaden through the collarbones, and then come forward and down. Come through this slowly. Again, trying to wrap more weight into the balls of the feet. Squeeze the hips towards one another. And stick with it. Good, Catherine. Go 
couple more breaths. Very nice. Slowly come up, super, super slow. We don't want to head rush here. Good. Turn your toes towards the top of your space and just step the feet together. Nice work. Inhale and reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Touching the floor, bend your knees like you're going to come into chair pose, but keep squatting so that the heels pop up off of the floor so you're in a super low squat. Good. Hands come to your heart here. And then you're going to come to your bottom. So for some of you, you're going to be able to reach your hands forward and sit back. Others of you are going to want to reach your hands for the floor. I have to reach my hands for the floor because my tailbone is still kind of injured. But if you can, reach your hands forward and sit back. Good. And then we'll set up for Navasana boat pose. So we're in a seated position. You might need to walk your feet forward just a little bit. So make sure you're on your sit bones. You're not on your tailbone. You're on your sit bones. Pull your knees into your chest. Squeeze the knees together. Squeeze the feet together. And then either hold on to the backs of the thighs here holding the basana boat pose, or maybe extend the fingertips out in front of you. This is a lot of work. If you want to work even more, kick the legs straight, pull your femurs into their sockets, so your thigh bones, right? Look up, hold here for three, for two, you got it. For one, exhale, cross at your shins, just rock forward here, press into your palms, and then step back. You can move through vinyasa if you want, or just press to down dog. Vinyasa might feel nice for the front body. Okay. Moving up and down, we're facing dog here. Take your right leg high, and then step to the outside edge of your right hand. Rock forward and back a little bit. Leave your back leg high for this first moment. Just a little bit of movement. Forward and back. Good. And then come down to lizard. You can use a block here to help stabilize. Come into the forearms. Try to squeeze your right knee towards your right upper arm today. So don't flare it out to the side. Right toes should be in line with right knee. If you want more sensation in that left quad, you can bend your left knee, reach back for your left foot with your right hand. But still squeeze the right knee in towards the right upper arm. Yes, that looks good. Good. Slowly release if you have your back foot, so no slingshot action there. You want to just let it go nice and slow, and then come back out of your lizard. So, Staying with your hands forward. This is going to be a little different transition today. You're going to rock forward and back just a little. And then step your left foot up, coming into Malasana once more. Extra Malasana today, just for a little bit. Extra hips. Good. Touch your hands to the floor. Walk your feet back or jump them back if you want a little extra. You can take Vinyasa or go right to down dog. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, step it to the outside of the left hand. High lizard lunge. So keep that back leg high first. Rock forward and back a little bit. After a couple breaths, go ahead and lower your back knee down. Keep your left knee squeezing towards your left upper arm. Don't let it fall out to the side today. Left toes in line with left knee. And then... Maybe come to the forearms, maybe use a block, but actually activate. Pull that left knee towards the left shoulder. A little bit more if you can. Good, Daryl. Nice, Brian. You got it. If you took the twist on the other side, you can here. So you're going to reach back with your left arm, maybe bend your right knee, clasp hold of the right foot. Again, this is just an option, it's not necessary. Gets into the right quadriceps a little bit more. Good, nice, Sarah, go ahead and release.
slowly turn your body back to the front if you're twisted, and then come back up onto your hands, come back up onto the back toes, rock forward and back a little bit. You know it's coming this time. Malasana, step right foot up, sink the hips down. Ah, and just rock a little bit here. Good. And then from here, lift your hips, wiggle the feet back together. And actually not so far together, about hip socket distance apart. Inhale to lift halfway. And exhale, fold here. If you have a block, grab your block on your way up. Just come all the way up. If you don't have a block, don't worry about it. But if you have a block, you're going to place it between your upper inner thighs. We're going to do standing camel pose. Okay, so toes are pointed forward. And everybody, bring your one hand to your low belly, one hand to your low back. And now guide your tailbone down, not under, like you're pushing that block forward if you have a block, but just down. The block might go a middle, millimeter forward. Okay, squeeze the block if you're using a block. If you're not using a block, just squeeze your outer ankles towards one another. Keep pulling your tailbone down. Now take that hand that was on your low belly and place it on your sternum. Pull your sternum up without arching your back. Find length in the spine. This is the secret to all back bends, is length in the spine. So tailbone down, sternum up. Now bring both hands to the low back. Push the hips forward and keep lifting your sternum up. Your chin can stay towards your chest, or you can start to move back as a consequence of lifting your sternum up so much. So you're lifting your sternum up, you're pulling your tailbone down, your hands might even go down your thighs a little bit. That's a little bit more advanced, so be careful because you don't want this to get into your low back. You should never feel the back bend in your low back. You do, that's a little indication that you're gonna come out of it and readjust. Good, one more breath here. And slowly come up. If you're using a block, just release the block. Take a breath in, reach all the way up, and then breath out. Come back through that squat, all the way to the floor. Come back to your bottom, and roll down onto your back. Setting up for bridge pose. Soles of the feet planted on the floor, toes slightly in. Fingertips reaching for heels. Inhale, pick your hips up. Any arm variation will do in this bridge pose. I want you to focus on that tailbone reaching towards the backs of the knees. So tailbone shooting forward, sternum pulling towards your face. And again, hands can stay planted on the floor. You can interlace them, walk up onto your shoulder blades. Hold your bridge pose. Keep extending through the low back. Good. Inner thighs roll towards one another. Now, don't lower your hips. Release your hands however they are. Make room for your hips to come down. Now, before you come down, I want you to tilt your tailbone more forward, almost like you're tucking it under a little, and then slowly lower down and wiggle your feet forward at the same time. It's going to give you length through the low back. Good. Take a moment of rest here. And we'll set up for two more rounds of back bends. Take any back bend variation you want. Bridge pose, wheel pose, okay? Or if you want to change it up a little bit in a different type of back bend move, you can do that. Go ahead when you're ready. Inhale, press into the feet if you're doing bridge again. Remember, tailbone long, sternum towards the face. Yes, that looks nice, Catherine. Good, Emily. Inner thighs more in up for everyone, just a little bit. Good. After about five breaths, you're going to come down. Again, as you come down, Tailbone pushes towards the front of the mat. Lower the hips down. You can even wiggle the hip, feet forward a little bit. You can sway your knees side to side in between. Back bends here if you like. And then let's do just one more back bend. Okay, so. Setting up. Press in 
Release the feet if you're taking bridge. Lift the hips, inner thighs roll in, tailbone long. You want to take wheel, hands up alongside the ears, squeeze the elbows in, come to the crown of the head first, and then rise up. With it, that looks really nice. So when you're ready to come down, I want you to focus on giving your hips time to adjust and pull forward and the feet wiggle forward a little bit at the same time too. Let your back have space, good. And then you can sway your knees side to side. Very nice. And then let's take a nice morning stretch. Reach your arms up over your head. Legs nice and long. Big breath in. Big breath out. Twist and back bends are really nice compliments. So just go ahead and squeeze the knees in. On an exhale, drop the knees to the left. Open your right arm out. your time to come through and switch sides. Okay, come back through the center here. And you can take yourself into a figure four pigeon right away, or you can roll all the way up and fold forward in your pigeon if you prefer. So you'll just choose how you wanna move into pigeon. Just be careful in your pigeon. We usually start on the right side. It doesn't really matter because we're gonna do both sides, but typically we start on the right side. Flex the foot that is forward. If you're on your back, try to push your right hip forward a little bit. Okay, give yourself a, another couple breaths here and just switch sides. Take your time between sides. Give yourself as much time as you need to kind of get the blood and circulation back. If you're folded forward, that is. If you're on your back, it's no problem. Try to relax the muscles in the jaw, in the face, in the throat. more breaths and then make your way out of your pigeon so taking your time transitioning out of this we'll all meet up in a seated position so take your time to come to a comfortable seat Bring the soles of the feet together, the knees apart, and feet a little bit away from the hips for Tarasana star pose. You may want to block or something here. We're gonna come forward and down. You actually get to round your back. So you can always just stack your fists on top of your feet.
come to a comfortable seated position, kneeling or cross-legged. If you want to, you can sit up on a prop if that helps you. And we'll come into a very quick little meditation before we move into our Shavasana today. So this is an ancient Taoist practice. It's called a smile meditation, where you literally smile at the organs of your body. And we're not going to do all of them because it's an abbreviated version, but we're just going to do some of them. And if it seems kind of silly, that's okay because you're probably smiling already, right? So let your hands just rest in your lap here, soften your shoulders, let your eyes close. And you might already be smiling on the outside. But starting with the top of your head, just Send a smile to your brain. Send a smile to your heart. And this next breath, send a smile to your lungs. your entire respiratory system. Send a smile to your stomach and your entire digestive system. Send a smile to your endocrine system, that's what's responsible for your hormones. You might not know what it looks like, but just send a smile to it, thanking them for working. Send a smile to your immune system. And finally, just feeling the warmth and safety and comfort the sense of a smile brings to the body from the inside out. Let this soak in like a sponge to each one of your cells. And if you like, you can stay here for the remainder of your rest in a seated meditation, or if you'd rather Come to a Shavasana, now would be the time to transfer out, letting yourself move into any Shavasana position that is comfortable, that's like the wall or a piece of furniture, or just rolling down to your mat. Allow yourself to get as comfortable as possible. And once you do, rest in the stillness for about another minute or so. As we're still settling in, I'll share the quote I have for you today. It's actually a passage from Cleo Wade's Heart Talk book. It says, if you are grateful for where you are, you have to respect the road that got you there. We must appreciate all that we survive, the small, the medium, and the monumental. Find gratitude in your life story. Wake up every morning and say to yourself, I made it here from where I started, and I am so proud of that. When we do this, we bless ourselves and feed ourselves with the love required for us to flourish and to keep going no matter where we come from or what we have been through.
deepen your breath here, letting the belly rise and the chest expand. Take an audible exhale. Start to wiggle up through your fingers and your toes. Roll your ankles and your wrists here. As you're lying down, let your head rock from side to side. And slowly stretch out. a hug to your chest, roll to one side, make your way up to a comfortable seat, slowly, gracefully, we'll meet together in the seated position, I'm gathering the hands in front of the heart, Let that sense of a smile that we cultivated in our meditation just fill your entire being today. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be free from suffering. May you be filled with peace and ease. Together, let's seal our practice in with the breath. Go ahead and release out all the air here. Take a very deep, nourishing breath in and let it go. Thank you so much, everyone, for sharing a piece of your Saturday morning with me and with one another. Namaste. Thank you. And happy Easter if you celebrate Easter. <laughs> Great job today, Yogi. I hope you enjoyed this practice. And if you did, please share it and like it. Maybe even subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with all of my new releases. And if you want more yoga offerings and to maybe contact me in person and send in requests, head on over to my website. I'll be happy to connect with you there. And finally, thank you for your donations. They keep this class going and are appreciated so much.